what are some of our favorite cycling products of all time? Jimmy. Hello. <laughs> There's a list of things here, which are your favorite cycling products of all time. So I, I think the conditions for this were cool, but expensive. So yeah. not necessarily uh, you have them, uh, but definitely stuff that you like covered. Mm-hmm. Um, like Buffalo Bill and skin. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so my first one on the list is steel bikes. I have two custom-made steel bikes that I absolutely love. Every time I look at them, I just I, they make me smile. One of which is a Moss bike, which is a road race bike, which I got built probably more than a decade ago now, and I still have it, and I still use it, and I'm about to convert it to a lightweight hill climbing bike because it's that phenomenal. And my other one is a 650B gravel bike made by howler both of these bike builders i know and i love them and i love these bikes and they're beautiful and magnificent and gorgeous and lovely and i love them i've seen them they look very cool they are very cool cool. i have i have owned a steel bike but it was a a fixed gear conversion uh which was a pearson frame that my granddad gave to me and that was given to him by his mate joe tarrant who used to race and it was very green who was the uh, brother of Chris Tarrant. <laughs> famous British brother. TV presenter. They're very far apart in age. Yeah, yeah. That, that can happen. Yeah, fair enough. Shall I do one of my ones now? Yes, what's one of yours? Should we alternate? Uh, one of mine is the, and I know this is one this of is your favourites jo- as well. Jo- this, this is a joint, is a joint, one. joint one. The Silka top tube pump or frame pump, which is a frame pump. So many people ask what it is and it just slots underneath the top tube of your bike. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, an alternative to having a mini pump in your pocket or attached to the side of the frame. And it, with a spring, it just holds itself into the top of the frame. And it means if you do have a puncher or you need to pump up a tire at any point in your ride, you can do so without going. <laughs> so what you've described is a feature of all top tube pumps. <laughs> yes. Why, the Why is this one, one so good? Because it's so well made and satisfying it looks amazing it feels amazing to use even slotting it onto the valve is satisfying however it's like 200 quid is it that much? we both got it reduced i think i i think my i think i paid for about 120 quid for mine so i've used top tube pumps on my bikes for the best part of a decade i've the majority of them the majority of the pumps I've used are a top peak one, which costs about 15 quid, which is phenomenal. It does it exactly great. the same job as this one. Right? Yeah, yeah, you do not need the Silker one. I bought a Silker one discounted. At, I think it was about 120 quid because I had a lovely bike. It was one I had the hand illustrated um, alloy bike that my mate did a hand illustration across the whole thing. It's absolutely phenomenal. And I was like, well, I want, I'm going to use a top tube pump. I want one that is fitting to how beautiful this bike is. So I was like, I'm going to, go wild and I'm going to buy it. And the whole thing is like alloy machined. It's just, it is a phenomenal, phenomenal pump, but completely and utterly unnecessary. And I think you saw my one and you were like, oh my goodness, that is mint. We I had have it to in get Spain, one as well. didn't we? Yeah. Uh, That's so good. So they retail for 172 pounds. Wow. We both bought them, reduced yep. from Sigma Sports. Yeah. <laughs> 120 quid. Yeah. Yeah. I remember it was out of stock for age and you were like, Francis, it's back in stock. It's back in stock. Get it, get it. I was like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> bought it straight away they come in a few different lengths uh you need to measure your frame make sure you get the right one so if you see one super cheap and then it's a weird size just make sure it's going to fit i tell you what's beautiful extra bougie when we me and jimmy used to go to bespoke which is like the steel bike yeah. festival and there's lots there with um custom paint jobs and i've seen one that then get the silica pump made in the same custom paint as the oh, steel bike yeah. Ooh, very nice mm. i would like to customize my frame in some way uh frame pump in some way i guess i guess because it's do, it's metal you can paint it yeah. yeah and it looks so sleek it looks like it's part of the bike mm-hmm. i think that's the appeal of them isn't it that they're so sort of slender doesn't stick out yeah it's beautiful yep completely unnecessary but absolutely beautiful on to the next thing uh this is one of mine it is chris king headsets i've installed many of these but never owned one i have one on shop. my steel moss bike um it's again, it's just like, it's, it's overindulgent. It's unnecessary. It's very well made. 
they just look amazing. They, I just love them. Actually, I used to have a coffee machine at home and Emily bought me a tamper. So a tamper is what you like press the coffee grinds into the basket, I think it's called, for the coffee machine. And Emily bought me for my birthday once a Chris King headset tamper. So they basically like machined a head. Oh, the little, yeah, so it yeah. looks like the top. Oh, the, it's uh, so yeah, good. The cup. It's so good. I just, I just <laughs> love them. They're like, again, like, you know, you don't need it, but they're beautiful. They've got loads of different colors. I'm all, whenever I'm like specking a bike, I'm always thinking like, well, does a, does like an orange Chris King headset work on this or does this work? And then you can never get stock. So then you end inevitably just get a cheap one instead, but they're amazing. I love them. Fair play. My next thing is, and so this is what, back when I used to work at a bike shop, we'd always have these on our laptop screens when we were doing no work <laughs> <laughs> and we'd be looking at bikes, obviously. And one of the brands was English Cycles and they predominantly make these, well, the one, pictures I've seen are these TT bikes, which are completely like slammed. They're beautiful and you're going to have to just look at pictures of them. If you just type in English Cycles TT bikes, I'm sure the positions on them, as soon as you put yourself in a good position for going fast, they won't look as good. However, the completely slammed, like the, to in, like the handlebars are in line with the top tube completely straight and they just look mint. I nearly bought one of these. Did you? When I, so when I bought my Moss bike about a decade ago, I was a triathlete and I was looking to buy a custom steel bike that was for racing, i.e. triathlon. And I very nearly bought an English Cycles, but then I determined that I was very unlikely to use a TT bike enough. So I ended up getting a road bike with clip-on extensions. And later on, I bought a carbon TT bike. But yeah, they are absolutely awesome. I love them. I found something that we should get. I love the idea of a steel TT bike. It's so... Um, How about this one? Oh, do you know what? I think I've seen that in person. I've just brought up a picture for the listeners at home of a tandem TT bike made by English Cycles. We could do an event on that. I could pair you with someone more appropriate for you to do an event on that. No, because I, I enjoy your commentary. I think you should. I think mm. you should do it. This is how you're going to win the Gravel World Champs. Aero chain set. Well, this is how I'm going to win the Gravel World Champs. Mm. I mean, it's totally impractical, isn't it? Even the normal TT bikes, because if you're going for aero, you're not going to... It's not It's not that aero. Probably isn't that aero. I reckon it's pretty aero. I think the, the, main, the main difference with something like that is the bike is going to be... Comfortable. The, the correct geometry and therefore have less bike, is going to have as little bike as it needs to be, if you know what I mean. It's yeah, less but bike. It, with aero, more, sometimes more bike is better. That's why those horrible I triathlon think, bikes are just like sails. I'm pretty certain that nothing is faster than something. <laughs> <laughs> the next, so I'm going to give my next one. Um, MV Forks, back in the day when they used to have the lovely branding down the side. I'm again biased because I have one on my Moss bike. Uh, in fact, NV finishing kits. I've like, I've wanted an NV finishing kit forever, but then you kind of go like, right, so there's the stem, there's the bars, there's, there's the seat post and you price it up and it's like a thousand pounds and you're like, uh, I think I've exa exaggerated that slightly, but not by that much. Um, it's just too expensive. I could not justify buying it as much as I want it. But I do have a fork because I got it cheap when I bought my Moss bike. I love it. It looks great. My next one is all Danger Holm bikes. So there's a guy called Gustav who strips, paints, and rebuilds and fully customizes Scott bikes. So I think he has a deal with Scott. He's a Scott ambassador. He's a Scott ambassador. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think they give him the frames. He does these insane things to them and creates the most beautiful Scott bikes you will ever see. And he did a road bike, it's mainly mountain bike stuff. He did his first ever road bike, which was a Scott foil, and it looks amazing. The mountain bikes, however, is what is my favorite bit. And he'll just put the most bonkers parts on. They're all match, he's an artist. He's he an is, artist. yeah. I've, I've seen him like make 
custom uh, shifters, mm -hmm. which he's then embedded into. So this is for a, a mountain bike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like little blip kind of things that he's then embedded into the bars. So like you've got this mountain bike, which is like zero cables. It's all just like hidden art. It's, it is it's, the stuff he produces. You just doesn't exist anywhere. I don't else. know how to. You, how, how does he think of the things to do? It's the amazing. thing. The thing I love most about him, though, is his fashion sense. <laughs> fashion sense. His Instagram with his little glasses. Little he, glasses. He does, and these, short he does these reels on Instagram, which uh, it'll be him skidding a bike into frame, taking off his goggles, and then you have to watch to see what's underneath. <laughs> <laughs> Check him out. Short shorts, so cool. massive quads, great beard. <laughs> He looks like he's like Scandinavian or something, rather. Great rider as well. I love him. Yeah, he's great. Yeah, he's pretty handy. Good, excellent choice, Francis. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. But Mark can you imagine? You you probably can never get one. Does he sell the bikes afterwards? What happens? I'm pretty sure he strips them down again and then he rebuilds them. Probably. He just keeps going, changing stuff, a bit new thing. You know, it's like us. He probably wants to keep as many bikes in the studio as possible so he can then pull from it and make different things. What's your next one? Uh, I remember seeing this a number of years ago. I think it was for, um, is his name Enzo? Enzo Colnago? 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 The guy that founded Colnago had an 18 carat gold plated bike made for his birthday. And I think it ended up going to like Pope John Paul II or something rather. And it is just like the, the, the most beautiful classic steel, well, gold. <laughs> uh bike all just finished in like traditional styles i love it it's absolutely beautiful he gave it to the pope i think there's something to do with the pope i don't know that's a very pope like thing isn't it he, just sitting on a, a golden throne with his gold like, bike with his gold bike yeah. his gold hat uh ernesto is his name ernesto that's it ernesto. um it's absolutely beautiful it's 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 it was priced at forty eight thousand pounds um so it's not going to be something i'm going to run out and buy mm-hmm but if I won the lottery, like the jackpot, not just like forty-eight thousand pounds, I would buy it and put it on a wall. You wouldn't. You wouldn't ride it to work. No. Well, you wouldn't have. You wouldn't work. I wouldn't work. Yes, correct. And if I was going to get to work, it'd be in my gold-plated helicopter, not my gold-plated bike. <laughs> Jimmy, you must have been a magpie in a previous life. You love a shiny thing. <laughs> You're going for a lot of shiny things in your list. Uh, my my. Last and definitely not least and not shiny thing. Disappointed. <laughs> Is it the Amazon shoe dryer? I've brought, I've put this in so many videos in the past. It's a thing that, okay, it probably doesn't matter for anyone who doesn't live in England, but at least 60% of my rides, I end up with wet shoes. So a shoe dryer, which won't melt your shoes, which is what happens if you put them on a radiator and generally the radiator is on too hot. A lot of shoe brands say you're not supposed to dry your shoes with and, and, and except for just airing them and just letting them dry themselves. The shoe dryer is so, so good and it's like 20 quid on Amazon. So it's actually not expensive. This list is meant to be cool but expensive. I'm not sure yeah, whether it's cool. cool or expensive, cool. but we'll, we'll allow cool. it. I guess it's it's expensive for shoe drying, I guess. Yes, I guess so. But it is, it is disappointing that that's on cool but expensive list when I've got a £48,000 gold-plated bike. I'd rather have a shoe dryer than that bike. It adds more to my life. If you have 10 pairs of shoes and you get 10 of them, then that would be indulgent, mm -hmm. expensive. Because I can go ride in the next day and not do that thing where you've got wet shoes and you go... Or, buy, or get the £48,000 bike, sell it, and buy a pair of shoes for every day. Very wasteful. That is wasteful. Emily, what would you have? Oh, um... I could only think of one thing. I like all of your things. I could only think of one thing. And as soon as I mentioned it, when we were putting this list together, Jimmy said he also thought of it at the same time as the most uncool thing. So make of it what you will. The classic sort of Brooks leather saddles and matching hand grippers, which I actually bought and owned. I think they're very cool. For like a sort of more classic, hand I also had- Hand grippers? A, they, it's, like, it's like a leather that you'd have on like a sit upright type bike. I, um, I bought them and I had them on my uh, steel bike, which was a commuter bike. Oh, they're just grips. Right. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, little yeah. grips, but they all match in leather. It was incredibly uncomfortable. And I was told that it, I, you just had to persevere and it had to wear, wear in. But I was also told, do not 
get them wet under any circumstances, which is hard when you're on a bike and you ride it, it gets wet. So I used to um, cycle around with a plastic bag in my pocket so that if I left it anywhere, I could put the plastic bag over the saddle so it wouldn't get wet, but it did get wet anyway. And it sunk a lot. So it was incredibly uncomfortable, incredibly impractical, but I think they look great on like a nice sort of classic steel bike. I think they're lovely. Jimmy Brooks, disagrees. England, leather grips, brown, one size, 72.63. Yeah. 72 pounds. Yeah. And then I, I sold them. I just, I hated it. Oh, it's all right. The green ones are cheaper. They're only 57.99. Those would look great on my gold plated bike. <laughs> I have one more addition to the list. Oh, yeah? A um, wine bottle holder that attaches to your top tube so that you can ride around on your £48,000 gold-plated Colnago with a 200 bottle of vintage red wine attached to it. Mm. I can see that. That's practical. That's that's up there with the shoe dryer. That's I would good. I'd probably get the bottle gold-plated as well to match the, the bike, of course. <laughs> okay. Uh, tell us yours via email at wildonespodcast at cagemedia.co.uk or in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube. 